Good morning, everyone. I'm back. Yes, my voice is, um, I just think this is the way it's going to be. Uh, I have very severe environment allergies and we've tried a lot of different things. I think this is just the voice I'm going to have. So bless your hearts for tuning in. Uh, but I hope you get something out of the message and you can understand it through, um, all of my scruffy voice, but I am happy to be back. Yes, we are in the kitchen because, um, thank goodness, um, we're in here in the cool, um, because in the sanctuary, it is not heated or cooling. And, um, one day maybe we can, but we're blessed to be in here. Um, because once you go through the change of life, um, heat and humidity are not your friends. And so, uh, the last thing y'all want is a grumpy brandy on a Sunday morning. So, uh, I am back. Uh, I had a wonderful, blessed, um, vacation of recharging my spirit, mind, and my body. And, uh, I got to go on a trip with, uh, my chosen sisters, and uh, for part of it was very busy and we had a great time. And then the second part of it uh, was truly for resting. So I'm happy to be back. I have a lot of great sermons coming um, for the summer months. We will more than likely be in the, in the kitchen because there is air in here. Thank you, Jesus, for air conditioning. Um, but we're glad that you're with us, and um, today is Father's Day, and I got to see mine yesterday just for a little bit, but I'm blessed to get to still have him and get to celebrate him yesterday, and I love him so much, and um, so today, um, celebrate your dad, and uh, if you are the dad, I hope that you have a wonderful, blessed day. Um, fathers come like other, like mothers in many different forms. Um, some of us have great earthly fathers and some don't. Um, some don't even know who their dads are. Some don't, uh, have any communication with them. Some have father figures through, um, grandparents, uncles, uh, mentors, teachers, coaches, ministers. Um, there's just a variety. Some moms play both roles um, for um, many people that I know. Their moms have been both mom and dad, and they did a great job in those roles. And I heard um, the late, great Bobby Bowden talk about that a lot of the young men that came through his program at Florida State, he was their father figure. And um, he did not take that lightly. And yes, he was their coach, but he was also teaching them about Christ. And God bless him. He led a lot of great people and a lot of young men to the Lord. And he is walking in heaven reaping the benefits of all that he did here on earth. And uh, so, um, whomever that parent figure was in your life, today, uh, reach out to them and let them know how much they mean to you. And uh, most importantly, and I love my earthly father, but most important is our Heavenly Father, and we all have that. And when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, you give your heart back to Christ and repent of your sins, you can grow a closer relationship with your Father. He is always with you. He is always for you, and He has a great plan for our lives. Even if your life started out in a difficult place and it wasn't the beginning that that you want to even talk about 
or praise about. The ending does not have to reflect the beginning. At any point, you can choose to change your ending in situations. So don't think just because your beginning was one way that you have to stay there. You have the choice. God gives us the choice and make good, wise choices, good, godly choices. That relationship with your heavenly father should be the tightest, most secure bond that you have in your daily life. Your heavenly father loves you and he is there for you. So you can reach out at any time. Um, we have our earthly parents, as I said, but we also have people along the way. And I've had many bonus parents in my life. And this week I lost one of them. Mr. Stacy Goss was my band director for six years. He and Mr. Killian, they were extensions of our parents. They protected us. They loved us. They disciplined us. And they were godly men. And um, it has been a very bittersweet because I know that Mr. Goss, um, thank you, Jesus, he didn't suffer with the illness very long. But I am praising God for that and that he is walking healed and in the streets of gold with his heavenly father today. And um, I appreciate, I love, and I thank God for Mr. Goss and Mr. Killian, who is still with us. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank them for what they taught us. And um, I did get to express that to uh, both of them a few years ago, and I'm so thankful that I did. I pull from things that they taught us each and every day. It wasn't just about band. It was about getting us prepared for life. And I've heard Nick Saban talk about that. He, he knows that not every player that comes through his program is going to the NFL. He is training men to be good men, good fathers, good husbands, good brothers, good all across the board, just good human beings. And he also, like Mr. Goss and Mr. Killian, he loves with a firm hand, he disciplines, he coaches, he leads, and there is so much wisdom in that. And uh, so today I, I lift up the Goss family and um, Mr. Goss, I know that you're in heaven, but I just want you to know I appreciate you and happy Father's Day to a bonus parent. Our first scripture today comes from Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Now I have one parent before we get started who lived out these verses and showed it in God's perfecting way that he wanted a parent to, to train up a child. And the other ignored every one of them because she wanted to be, had a God complex. So, um, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, children obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives. For this is right, for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline. Honor, esteem, value as precious your fathers and your mothers, and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise. So that it may be well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. But get this part because that's the first few verses my mother quotes all the time. But this is the one that is very, very important, parents. 
Parents, do not provoke your children to anger. Do not aspirate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial and unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them, but bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I had one parent that was exemplary in God's direct, you know, teaching us as children. And I had one that went the total opposite way. It is very, very difficult dealing with difficult parents because you do want to respect them. But let me make this clear. Respecting a parent sometimes requires keeping them at arm's length, distancing yourself from them, limiting their access to you because you want to respect them and you want to live out God's calling of respect to your family. How you can do that? is pray for them, forgive them, keep strife out of your life, keep the peace. And if that means that you can't be around someone, then that means you can't be around them. I have explained that to my mother. She doesn't get it. My dad does. My dad is such a wonderful, man. He has God's touch. He, ha he is a wonderful, wonderful man. I, you may have a father that is someone you can't tolerate. You can't be around that causes a lot of conflict and strife. I feel for you. I pray for you, but praying for them, forgiving them, and then limiting how much access they have to you is for your peace and walking out what God says about keeping strife out of your life. Billy Graham once said, a good father is one of the most un unsung, unpraised, and unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. <coughs> Our society today, a lot of men and a lot of women walk away from their responsibilities. They leave it on the grandparents. They leave it on child services. They just leave the kids on the mercy of the world. Um, it is very, very important for a father to show their children how they should act who a, a daughter picks as a husband should reflect who their father is. Um, I picked someone that was more like my mother than my daddy, my therapist later. And, and my, my ex-husband is not a bad person. He and I just did not mix. And my therapist said, when you are picking your next spouse, make sure he is like your dad and less like your mother. And those are words that I remember all the time. And um, as I said, you know, I, I praise those people that step in and take on children that are not their own flesh and blood. They are to be commended because they chose you and um, it is not by blood, it is by love. So appreciate those bonus parents. And um, we all have that heavenly father. So each and every day is Father's Day. So thank him, show gratitude to him and praise with thanksgiving each and every day. And our next scripture text 
And by the way, for all of you who read a lot or uh, ministers or teachers, when you are uh, something I found, this is just kind of off subject, but I wanted to share because you may not know. There, if you don't want to write in your Bible, but you want to highlight things, there are post-it notes that are translucent now. And see how that is? I can highlight the passage and look right at it. And then when it, when you're done, you can pull it off. So uh, that's just a little tip that I wanted to pass along this morning. Um, someone gave me that tip, so uh, it has been very beneficial. So thank you. Um, but also, our second scripture text comes from Psalms 103 and 13. Thank y'all for always letting me just go uh, off page sometimes. <laughs> um, actually, it is from Isaiah, and it is... Um, I don't know. Sorry. Little malfunction this morning. Yes, it is. Psalms 103.13. Just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him with awe-filled respect and deep reverence. For he knows our most and he remembers that we are merely that. We are his children. He made us in his image. He is with us always. He is always for us. So no matter what goes on in the world with our earthly parents or mentors or whatever, always go back to the Lord and say, what are you teaching me in this? I used to just be angry at God for the way that my mother did me and, and treated me and still does it to this day. But then someone said, why don't you ask God what he's trying to teach you? And the answer I got was, you will do more help for people that are going through situations like yours that they may never talk about, but by your example of being a godly person, forgiving, praying, and, and continuing to do my work, despite what happened, that will speak volumes, and you can help people in a different way. Not We don't all have the same issues. We don't all have... Uh, like Joyce, she was sexually abused. I don't. I I would have a hard time mentoring to someone because I've never been through that. I feel for people that go through that, but she can mentor to them because she has. I can mentor to people about the kind of hurt that I had. So whatever hurt you've had, it is not wasted. Use it to uh, be a be God's light, be a helper to others that are going through it that may never tell you. Share your story. And, you know, it, it's difficult, this life. And not everybody has a, a good beginning and a good path. But it is up to us to be good Christians. And uh, once you become an adult... It is not my parents' fault for the choices I make and my attitude and all of that. Because once you become an adult, you get to make those choices and um, you can't keep blaming it on other people. I was doing that for years. I was saying, well, my bad attitude or the choices I was making was in rebellion or um, that that doesn't fly with the Lord. He gives us free reign and choices, but not free from consequences. So when we make the bad consequences, he's like a good parent. He disciplines. And we don't always like that discipline. But make better choices. Stop blaming others. Because I can't blame my mother at 47 
for my choices and my anger and my bitterness. I have to lay that down at the cross and move on. So whatever burden you're carrying, lay it down and keep moving. Um, in Proverbs 22 and 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talent. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Are you teaching your children about Jesus and how to be a great, positive Christ representative? If that answer, if you can't definitively say yes right off the bat, you need to reevaluate your parenting. You need to reevaluate re who you are and make, start making changes. Don't keep going down the same path. Start making changes in yourself, which your children will see. Correct them when they're wrong and keep things moving in a positive, Christ-like representative way. Do not only show your earthly father love today, as I said before, but today spend some time connecting, praising with gratitude your Heavenly Father, let us pray. Dear Lord, today we come to you and lift up our earthly fathers, and we also praise you, Jesus, and our Heavenly Father. We thank you. We are so grateful. We are undeserving of all the blessings. Dear Lord, teach us each day to be better Christ representatives to you in the world, for you in the world. Dear Lord, thank you for all of our blessings that uh, we have had and that we will have. Dear Lord, remind people that they need to stop and rest and recharge. And dear Lord, our leaders, uh, please give them strength and discernment and turn from their catty ways, their evil ways. And dear Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we lift up all of those on our prayer list. We ask that you comfort, strengthen, and heal them. Giving peace to families who are hurting. Dear Lord, we ask as we always do for a hedge of protection around each one of us and our families. Provide protection, comfort, healing from anything or anyone that can harm us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. As you go through this week, evaluate how you are and how you are guiding your children. And if you don't like it, make changes. We all need to self-reflect all the time as to how our attitudes are, how we are carrying ourselves in the world, and are we really and truly living out what we profess as Christ representatives. Thank you for your time, your encouragement, and your prayers. I love you, and I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Until we meet again, God bless you all.